Today we hear about the Samaritan woman who meets Jesus at the well. The woman's faith in God is strong and Jesus reveals to her that he is the Messiah. Here are the weekend's announcements. Please note that our parish Lenten mini retreat planned for April 4th has been canceled. Plans are underway to begin recording mass here so that folks can watch it from our website. The Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a car raffle with the proceeds going toward our Growing More in Faith expansion campaign. This cool Hawkeye colored car is available at the end of the front sidewalk for you to check out if you'd like. Raffle tickets are $25 each or a book of five tickets for $100. I think Father has an announcement now. He's not paying attention, but <laughs> <laughs> he's busy talking. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to remind you again of all the things we talked about last week about uh, our being careful of the spread of the coronavirus and our precaution. Uh, that we, uh, of course, don't hold hands during the Lord's Prayer, that we uh, uh, don't uh, shake hands and sign a peace, but maybe bow or other ways of saying peace to each other. Uh, thirdly, the, the, that we don't receive on the tongue. Bishop uh, sent a note that we were asked to read, and I forgot it, but it says simply this is, if you do receive on the tongue, then the Eucharistic minister is supposed to, after every person does, place the host on the altar, go back and wash their hands, back, so let's make it easy and simply receive in the hand, okay? Uh, and finally, we're not going to pass baskets anymore. Uh, the Johnson County has been uh, moved to step three, and, and that means that uh, you actually have a dispensation, I'm glad you're here, but please don't feel bad if, if you uh, are not comfortable coming to Mass. Uh, but during the offertory time, we have collection baskets in the three aisles, and they're also up here. Rather than passing the baskets, we'll just ask you to come forward for placing those baskets. Um, finally, communal penances have been canceled in the area. And I uh, just want to call your attention to this Friday. There is a 24 hours for the Lord, adoration and reconciliation. And, and confessions will be heard all the way from 8.30 in the morning on Friday until 8.30 next morning. 24 hours of confessions since we are not uh, able to do cool penance. Please take advantage of that opportunity. Thank you all for your cooperation, and again, we continue to keep in our prayers all those who are affected uh, by the coronavirus, you know, some individuals here in the community who are suffering. So, and we want to do all that we can to eliminate the spread of that. By the way, another thing that was said is it encouraged that in our smaller crowds, especially this weekend, uh, that you leave plenty of space in between groups of people. So feel free to spread out and uh, not be afraid to, to respect them. Well, let's respect each other and all of our wishes as we get through this. Thank you.
a need for peace to this celebration of the Eucharist, let's call to mind our sins. Pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am a great sinner in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, in my fault, in my fault, in my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and all goodness, who in fasting and prayer and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, there were thirst for water, and the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was this just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What should I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff in which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Like, strike the rock, and the water will will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sakar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, you do not know, have a bucket and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to him, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I will give will, will, be, will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he. 
the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days more. Many more came to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. There are two words we've used a lot this week. You've heard a lot. Social distancing. Social distancing to, to, to make sure that we are not spreading the coronavirus, even though we do not even know what we have it and we're carriers of it. Staying in distance between the people around us. You know, it's a wise thing, and it's the reason why in many dioceses they cancel masses, and why in our diocese the bishop is in here in Johnson County telling the people that uh, we have a dispensation. Uh, the point is not just spreading it to make sure that, that we even out, that that, that spread doesn't, if, if there is a, 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 an epidemic, it doesn't happen all at once and overload the system. So really appreciate your complying as best we can with all the things that are being asked of us. Social distancing. I think it's also something that's going on in the gospel today. You know, this woman comes to the well at noon. It's hottest time of the day, in a sense. If nobody else is there. She comes because no one else is there, it seems. Why does she come to the well at that hour? Well, you know, tradition has said that, that, that she was a sinful woman. I, didn't, I read the short version of the Gospel, but the long version, you know, Jesus talks to her and says, you have seven, you have five husbands, and the one you're living with now is your husband. You know, it's a, an interesting thing to think about. Traditionally, we've said this is a sinful woman, but I, I don't know that that necessarily is the case. You know, I, a, a scripture scholar, I was reading, Barbara Reed is her name, a Dominican sister. Uh, she says, you know, there's a lot of symbolism in John's Gospel. Important symbolism to, to remember. One thing, it's the noon hour, and he, she says, in a sense, Jesus called himself the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He, so she meets Jesus at a time when uh, the sun is, is brightest at noon, highest in the sky. The second thing she said is, you know, she was a Samaritan, and Jesus had uh, a new situation with the Samaritans and the animosity between Jews and the Samaritans, the, the Samaritans and Jews who had kind of intermingled with the Assyrians during the, the captivity, and, and they had taken on some of the uh, characteristics of the Assyrian beliefs, one of which for the time was that they were five gods. So in a sense, Barbara Reed says, maybe when Jesus is talking about the five husbands, he's really referring to the five false gods of the Assyrians. And it makes sense if you think about it. It makes make sense because of um, no place does Jesus say that she's a sinful woman. Jesus doesn't say, as he has in other places, go and sin no more. So why does she come to the well to, to, at that hour? We don't know. But I would say this. What is most important about that woman coming to the well is she thirsts. She has hungers. Just as we all do. Hunger for acceptance. Hunger for, for the mercy and peace of Christ. Hunger for God's love. And coming to the well at that hour with Jesus there, those hungers and thirsts are satisfied. <laughs> beautiful story, really, of the woman at the well. And you know what the beautiful thing about it is? She's changed so completely that she goes back to the town of Samaria and she tells everybody about it. She becomes an evangelist. You know, uh, there are uh, stories told uh, about Mercedes Benz, the German auto maker. Supposedly, years ago, they developed uh, uh, an energy uh, crushing the way when, when cars crashed, that the, the body of the car would absorb the energy and, and uh, save lives. And uh, remember the commercial property of the car running into the concrete wall. Mercedes-Benz is supposedly the first uh, car manufacturer to, to use that technology. And, and someone asked them once, and then every other car maker adopted that 
technology. Someone asked the engineer from, from Mercedes-Benz, well, why didn't you uh, patent it and hold firm on that patent so that other people didn't imitate you? And his response was this. Sometimes, some things in life are just too important not to share. Some things are just too important not to share. And that's especially true of things that save lives. She, the woman at the well, not something really important. She met Jesus. She found life giving water. She found eternal life. And she had to go back and share that with others. The beautiful fact of that is, is what we are going to celebrate come Easter time, our own renewal of baptism, our own renewal of baptismal water, our faith. We make the test to ask ourselves, are we excited enough about it that we share it with others? Are we excited to know that it's so important that other people see by our way of life and our example that we really believe that we have that eternal life within us? That flowing water. You know, it's interesting whenever there's a crisis going on in, in the world, it's, it's interesting how often that brings people together and we see some great things, even in the midst of the dark days. And if you, we're seeing it now, I you know somebody that is actually volunteering and offering any student that uh, has been having mispractice or, or, or lunch because of school closings or volunteering to, to feed them. A great story about a woman in Oregon who uh, was going into the grocery store and there was an elderly couple outside in their car waiting for 45 minutes to get someone's attention and then to go in there afraid to go into the grocery store and be crowded just to, to, to maybe uh, be, you know, caught, catch the, the, the coronavirus. So this woman goes in and, and not only takes her money and buys all of her groceries and brings it back, but it's a great reminder of that. And there's a wonderful story that's circulating in Italy. You know, Italy's experience is just terrible suffering, right? and the streets are, are bare because everybody is, is on lockdown and told to stay in their houses. But in, in Siena, there's a beautiful story of, of uh, people going out on their balconies, or standing in their windows, and singing these Italian love songs that, that are, are, everyone's joining and singing them and, and calming people down. That's a, a beautiful thing. We do come together in times of, of, of difficulty and, and how important that is. Even when we can't physically come together, then we come together in prayer. And that's part of what our faith is all about. To help us believe and, and know that God never abandons us, even in the darkest of times. You know, the, the story of the first reading, the, the Israelites grumble. They're in the desert. They think that God has abandoned them. And God miraculously proposes gives water from the rock. Well, if God can give water from the rock, we should have faith that God can help us do whatever we're encountering as well. But that doesn't mean that, that faith is something that says we just don't do anything. Faith has to be also informed, be informed by science, and the two have to work together, and we, we need to pay attention to the experts and, and follow their advice. But we don't have to give into despair. We can be people who, who know what God can do for us. Jesus did the unthinkable. He went and crossed the border into Samaria. He talks to a Samaritan woman, something a rabbi was never supposed to do. And he gives her living water. Well, we can do amazing things as well. So as we celebrate Eucharist, as we pray together, whether it's virtually or, or here in, in, in the presence of this church, Let's ask God for that ability to have faith. And allow our faith to give us confidence that we too can spread the good news like that woman of Samaria did. And that through our actions, through the things we do for one another, through our support, that there might be an epidemic in our world of kindness, compassion, and mercy flowing out to all people.
restored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I confess from baptism to the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world of God. Amen. God knows what we need before we even ask. We have confidence in God's concern for us. We bring our needs in prayer. We pray for the church. May it be a source of living water for all who thirst for meaning and purpose in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the courage to recognize and admit our sinfulness. May we, like the woman at the well, honestly face our lives and ask for help in changing direction. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who face prejudice and discrimination. May God heal their wounds and help them to continue to share their gifts for the good of the society. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who thirst every day, particularly those in areas of drought, refugees, and those displaced by violence and warfare. May they be assisted and provided with access to water and may our hearts be more sensitive to their suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all affected by the virus outbreak in mind, in body, or in spirit. May they find healing and comfort and for the development of new medicines to fight resistant diseases. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear we pray for all our loved ones who have passed away for the intentions written in our book of prayers and for all the prayers that we hold in our hearts today. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Good and loving God, despite the grumbling of your people in the desert, you never abandon them. As you provide streams of living water, hear our prayers and allow your mercy and your peace to flow through us. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks. 
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just, our duty, our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. So ardently did his thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. So and with all the angels and saints, we praise your mighty deeds, and we too give you thanks as we acclaim. in 
our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and give it to you in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with each other.
Let us pray. As we receive this pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in history become the true completion through Christ. Just a reminder to tell you to stay uh, tuned to social media to our website and Facebook page and, and our parish app. And we'll uh, give any information that might be changing as uh, the days go on. Thank you. Let's bow our heads and pray God's blessing. Direct, O oh Lord, we pray in the hearts of your faithful and in your kindness grant your servants this grace and abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace glorify.